Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation, and if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at basic router configuration. We'll be discussing configuring basic router settings, dual stack topology, configure router interfaces, and finally, IPv IPv4 loopback interfaces. This episode is part of my series on switching routing and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As we look at routers, they're a lot of times very similar to switches. They support a similar modal system. They have similar command structures. And a lot of times, many of the commands, they are the same. Both devices have similar initial configuration setups. You gotta go and put IP addresses, set up passwords. A lot of those are all the same. Here we have some basic router settings. As you get in here, notice first thing we do is set our host name. A lot of times, especially if you're using SSH, you have to have a unique host name. Plus that host name helps you identify which device you're in. When you start telnetting into lots of devices, it's good to have unique names so you remember what device you're telnetted into. We go ahead, we set our enable password here. That'll, that's going from user exec mode into privilege exec mode. Then we configure our console ports with a password and we tell it to use it for the login process. We set up our virtual terminals. We tell it to use it for the login process. And of course we set up our password encryption. For all plain text passwords in our configuration, these are the same as on a switch. And like we said, some of the commands, some of the processes are the same for our initial configuration. Once we're in there, we also set up a banner message of the day. Here we're saying authorized access only. Once again, that banner message of the day needs to start with a delimiter, a, a special character. Now that special character is up to you. A lot of times it's the shift and number keys. Any of those will work. I typically use a dollar sign. Once you start with a dollar sign or whatever delimiter there, it has to end with that same delimiter. So choose a delimiter that's not in your message. If, if we're going to use an exclamation mark, we couldn't put that in our message. And of course, this banner of the message day, at least say authorized access only. Then we also have saving your configuration. You wanna make sure you save your configurations in a production environment. So that way, if for some reason the device reboots, whether it lost power or you did a reload on it, it has that configuration saved so it loads it into memory and that is the copy command. So we put the keyword in copy, then it's where are we copying it from. Here we're doing the, the running config, which is in RAM, and then where are we copying it to? We're copying it to the startup. And that's a file here in our flash. And so the full command is copy running dash config space startup dash config, or you can trim it down to copy run space start. As we look at our network, and you look at those physical devices. A lot of times people, if you're not familiar with it, have a hard time distinguishing between a router and a switch. Think about the function of the device. That switch connects all the end devices on that local network. Each device on that local network needs to have a port where that cable plugs into. A lot of times those switches have lots of ports. They have 48 ports, 96 ports on them. Now, routers, on the other hand, typically have a different type of port. A lot of time it could be serial, could be a T1, could be fiber. They typically connect to a WAN connection and they don't have a lot of ports. They only need one connection into each network connected into them. And so three, four, five ports on a router, that could very well be enough for your network. And that's what a lot of people use is how many connections are on my device. If I have a bunch of ethernet, copper ethernet ports on there, if I got 48 of them, I got 96, that's a switch. If I just got a handful of ports, then that's probably a router. If I got like a half a dozen ports max, that would be a router. As we run today's networks, a lot of times networks in today's world run a dual stack. 
as we know, IP version 4 addresses, they're limited, and we don't have more of them. IP version 6 is coming in. A lot of more companies, a lot more businesses, governments, they're starting to use IP version 6 as the new IP technology out there. Now, to help us in the transition, a lot of companies are running what we call a dual stack topology, where they run IP version 4 and IP version 6 at a time. When you look at a topology, a lot of times you'll see that that's listed. Here in the center for our WAN connection, notice we have an IP version 4 network address and we have an IP version 6 network address. Both of these are listed. If you see that, that means we are typically running a dual stack. And if you notice, all five of these networks, they all have are running dual stack. Now, not every network is required to run a dual stack, but usually if you run dual stack in one part of your network, you're gonna run it on all the rest of your network. The one exception is a lot of times companies have a legacy network, meaning that's where they run their legacy devices. Sometimes older equipment, older network interface cards, proprietary devices, they don't support IP version six, so they would not function on, on a dual stack network. A lot of times that means they need additional special security on there. And so I see a separate LAN a lot of times for devices that don't support IP version four. One, because they don't support it. Now, true, they would work on a dual stack environment. They just wouldn't use IP version six. They wouldn't be able to communicate with any of the IP version six services. But a lot of times if they don't support IP version six, they're gonna need some additional security. That's where keeping them on their separate LAN is usually a good idea. If you like this episode on basic router configuration and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. As we configure our router interfaces, we, we go back and we, we think about the types of ports on there. A lot of times, routers support both LANs and WANs. They're the connections between the different networks. Routers typically have one, two, maybe sometimes three gigabit ethernets. Now, if they're a little bit older, it may, they're gonna be fast ethernet, but typically they have one or two ethernet ports on them. Fast ethernet, gigabit, or if you have the really new expensive ones, they could be 10 gig ports. They also typically have a couple of what we call high speed WAN interface cards. And these are slots where you can put the type of connection in there. So that it's sort of modular where you can put a card in there to match the type of WAN connection you need. Once you have these interfaces all in there, the, the gigabit ethernet or interfaces, the, the HWICs or the WAN interface cards, you have to put an IP address on them. Then once again, you also have to activate them. That's our no shutdown. You have to connect them into another device to make sure they come up. Because once again, if you don't connect both ends of it, you're not going to get that first up and the up up when you, when you look at the interfaces. And a lot of times it is good to put a description in there, especially for your WAN interfaces. This is our connection to our ISP. This is our ISP's connection into us. This is our fiber connection to our remote building across the city. It just, it helps you in the long run to go ahead and put some sort of description in there. Here we can see, we do have some configuration steps. As we get into it, we, we go into the interface. Here we're configuring gigabit ethernet 000. Now, depending upon the router you're on, it could be gigabit ethernet 00 with only two zeros, or it could be gigabit ethernet 000. It, it depends upon the router and where that port is located, whether it's a built-in port or part of those WAN slots we, we talked about previously. Go into that interface. Notice we are in the interface configuration mode here. We set up our addresses. We do an IP version four address. We do an IP version six address. Because we're setting these addresses, that's where you have to include the subnet or the prefix because we're setting them. And then we connect, then we put a description in there. And by default, all physical interfaces are off. So we have to activate it. We have to turn it on. We do that with no shutdown command. Once we've done that, 
go ahead and type exit. Now we can go in into the next interface. We set up our IP version four address, IP version six. We throw a description in there. We activate it with the no shutdown command. One little shortcut here is you actually don't have to type exit. You don't have to type exit in here. You could just type interface serial zero zero and it would take you into that interface. And then you can go ahead and set the IP addresses, descriptions and shut it down. This is the some of the initial configurations you need to do on each of the ports on your router. There is a special type of interface we need to talk about and it's the IP version for loopback interface. Now, this is a virtual interface. It is all done in software. There is no physical port associated with this. Being a virtual port, you can never connect any device to this port. What we can do here is we can assign an IP address to this. We can go and turn this address on. And a lot of times this is used for testing and managing. It's always available. And so we, we create a loopback interface and so that we can test, is this router still up and functioning? Even though the other connection going out the other side, the router may be down, we, we create a loopback to see, hey, does this router, is this router still working? Is it still able to route traffic to this loopback interface? It's not connected to anything, but it's used there for testing and management. Another great use here for these loopback addresses is creating labs. If you're studying for your CCNA, if you're doing labs for school or something like that, what you can do is use a loopback interface to simulate another interface, simulate another network. A lot of times you don't have the equipment to set up another network on the other side of the router, but what you can do is set up a loopback address, give it a different network address or IP on a different network. That way you can, once again, test and troubleshoot and see if you configured the routing properly. Can I get to this network? If you can, then you there. This allows you to do that without equipment. Setting up a loopback address is just like setting up an interface. What you do is from global configuration mode, you enter in the interface, and then instead of saying gigabit or serial at this point in time, you say loopback, and then you put a number. Once again, numbers start with zero and they work their way up. And you can go ahead and put that in there. And then you assign an IP address just like you would on a normal interface. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on basic router configuration. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.